Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the way to create this Last of Us inspired um, fungus effect. So, first let's drop the grid node. Because it's resolution. Um, it's flat, we don't need it, we need to make it uh, hilly terrain. So. No roughness, obviously. Um, just, you know, small hills. Small, smooth hills. I think this will work. Yeah. Good. Okay, now, pop network. Uh. Okay, first we don't need so many particles. We need only one uh, because first we will create one trail out of one particle and then we will uh, make other particles emit from this trail. So, um, for example, this one and uh, write $FF equals one. It means that particles emit only at the first frame. Currently we have one and it's uh, standing still. Let's make it move. Good. That works. But you see that's the problem. It doesn't stick to the surface. So how we can solve this? Uh, simply by using uh, pop up uh, one thing you need to choose here first context geometry so that it uh, samples the position of this uh, geometry that we created. Um, we need it because we're going to bring up this node, minimum position, and connect it to this first context geometry. It um, basically it looks for the uh, minimum position from the point to the surface uh, that we have. And we plug it into position so that it limits the position of our point. Okay. It's working as you see, but the movement slightly changed. I don't like it. Uh, let's tweak the seat setting a little. Where is it? Uh, at the edge. Uh, the thing is that I don't want this uh, particle to be at the edge as long as possible. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's getting harder than I thought. Uh, I think we can work with this. Good. Now we need to actually create a trail. The trail node for this and uh, trail length must be well bigger than two. Obviously, let it be two thousand. Yeah, that looks fine. Uh, maybe the trail increment should be l lower, like this. See the points uh, are getting closer if I decrease the trail increment. Now VDB, VDB from particles. Um, as you see, it's uh, it's too big. We need to decrease its size. Uh, well, first let's also decrease its voxel size. Let it be. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe like this. And the uh, radius scale. Uh, 
Mm. Sorry. Um. Okay, it's fine. For now, we can always tweak the settings. Okay, <laughs> we have our first trail. Now we need to create the, the rest of them. Uh, to do this, we need another pop network. Oh, sorry. Okay, um, here we need to change the emission type to points because we don't have surface anymore. We're working with points. Mm, and it's doing its thing. That's because it inherits uh, attributes from other pop network. We don't need this and we need our own velocity. And too many particles, too many, that would be three, three per second, they're flying away, again same procedure, same stuff as we did before, and here a very important thing, uh, since we no longer have uh, geometry, this, this geometry, um, we need to bring it up here. We need to connect it to the second input and uh, choose here a second context geometry. Here we're doing the same stuff. Uh. Mm hmm. Good. Uh, well, since I want to, uh, I want it to look like a spreading network. I want to create another stream with this node, and I want these particles that this stream creates to appear when uh, these particles that this stream creates die. So to do this, we need to here in the group field type in attribute dead equals one and uh, don't forget to increase the, uh, to reduce the life expectancy to something very very low maybe 1.1 and life variance just a little okay, and uh, connect it here uh-huh <laughs> Th this happens because uh, in uh, here in shape, we have sphere. We don't need it. We need uh, them to emit from points. Mm. Oh, and we need our own velocity as usual. Also, let's add pop force to both of these um, sources, to both of these uh, streams. Let's put it here just a little and uh, quite a lot of roughness. No, oh. <laughs> um, too much. It's too much. We have too many particles submitted. We don't need constant activation here. We need impulse count of four, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, that's something. Uh, let's put a trail node. Actually, I could have just copied this one. It would be easier. Mm -hmm. Something's happening. Uh, let's create this VDB. But we need to uh, make them smaller. Because this uh, they're not uh, root. Um, okay. Let's uh, decrease the voxel size to uh, uh, something like this, and the point radius scale to be something like this. Yeah, 
Uh, well, let, let's see both of them in comparison. Let's combine uh, these VDBs. The operation is called SDF union. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, right now they look kind of ridiculous. That's because we need noise. To do this, we need volume, bop. Uh, no, we don't need density. Uh, we need to sample the the volume. To this, to do this, we need volume sample. Here we have it. And uh, since uh, we are using SDF volume, the uh, the name of it is surface. Write surface in here. Nothing changed because we haven't added uh, the noise yet. Let's do it. I'm gonna use anti-alias noise 3D, and uh, we're gonna add position to it. It's quite bad because of a few things. First, its amplitude it must be decreased, and uh, we need to expand the actual volume with the VDB activate node. Expand and expand distance. That'll be like this. Now let's tweak the settings. Um, I need more frequency. Oh yeah. <laughs> now it starts resembling the actual fungus. More... Oh no. <laughs> Uh, not so much roughness, maybe like this will work. Yeah, let's leave it like this for now. Um, um, yeah, SDF smooth. Let's smooth it. We need one iteration, and uh, we need to convert it to actual mesh. Oh. Uh, no, I want thicker, thicker mesh. Mm -hmm. And you, you see, it's like quite smooth now. Maybe we need to increase the frequency. Uh, well, you can play around with this by yourself. I'm just gonna leave it with these settings. Yeah, I think it works. Okay, now as you see here, um, these trails, uh, they always they always submit from this one, from the uh, root root trail. We need to create a, sort of a mask. And to do this, we um, we need to create it with uh, volume. Oh, sorry, with the uh, VOP. Let's plug it in here. Let's dive in. Actually, yeah. Uh, to create the mask, I'm gonna be using point number. You see, because it uh, goes in a straight order from zero to the maximum number. So this is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna subtract the number of points. Uh, I'm gonna subtract one from the maximum number of points and plug it in here we need to subtract it because the maximum number of points uh, ca the counting starts from 1 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and uh, point number starts from 0 so we need to do this and uh, let's export it and call the attribute grad 
for gradient. Let's visualize it via color node. Run from attribute grad. Uh, we see our gradient, but one thing it it shouldn't cover the entire trail. Uh, so ramp will help. Uh, it must be spline. Spline ramp. Uh -huh, nice. No, it is smaller mask. Okay, I think this one works. The only problem, uh, let me show you it. I need light background, you see? It starts to appear right at the beginning and I don't need it. Change it, I can use fit range, frame number, and add it to our gradient. Let it be from minus one to one and from one to uh, to forty. Let's see if it fixed the situation. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Looks nice. Okay, so now we created our attribute, but to actually create our mask for this pop network uh, we need to create a group you see there is source group unfortunately we can use a mission attribute because it's only available if you choose scatter onto surface so let's uh, create our group out of this mask let's use a point triangle for this um, to create it I will use if expression so if attribute grad um, is more than uh, let it be a slider. Let's create a float slider. Um, let's call it emit. So if it's bigger than this value, we create a group point group set point group group um, so this is the geometry handle it's zero then uh, the name of the group will be emit uh, then the point ptnum and uh, one because we add points to the group. Mm. Yeah, you see, the group now is created, emit, and it has 10 points in it. That's cool. Now let's choose this group here. Uh, let's check this out. Yeah, you see? The particles submit only from this particular area. Or, yeah, it's cool. Um, okay, we've solved this problem. Let's see what we got. <laughs> yeah, it's quite cool um, okay now another thing is I want to I want these the ends of the of the trails to be smaller than the the ones that are uh, close to the root trail so uh, the farther the tra the points uh, get from the root trail the smaller they are uh, to do this we can use point wrangle let's 
Let's drop it here. Oh. Okay. Um, now we need to write B scale equals actually it must equal the distance to the distance between um, the points to this uh, root um, root trail. To do this we also need the information about where the root trail is. So let's connect it to the second input. Okay, nice. Um, so if we scale equals to distance between the current position of points and the position of this thing. So we don't have it, we need to bring it up here. Okay, to do this we need to first use the near point function. Near point one because we're using the, the second input and should be because it's near point um, here uh, between this the our current position and uh, uh, this the position of the trail okay and uh, let's call it uh, NPT Okay, but we only have the point number. We need to have uh, the position. Let's do it. Vector pause equals uh, point. One. Uh, this one is the name of the attribute P. We need the position attribute. Uh, position of what points of uh, NPT, oh, NPT must work. Uh, yeah, so we got this, and uh, let's put it here. The distance between pause and at P. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, good, good. But let's actually look at what we got. You see, so um, the uh, the bigger the uh, the um, bigger the length is, the uh, bigger the size is. We don't need we need it to be different. So let's put it like this, and uh, let's actually fit it. Use a fit node. It'd be five. I don't know what the maximum is actually. But let let's limit it to five and uh, zero. One. Mm -hmm. You see, it gets smaller gradually. Let's see if it works with the distortion. Uh huh. Okay. Um, we need to increase the, the size of it, the general size. Oh wait, that's too big. Mm. Something like this. Uh, maybe more. Uh, let's uh, expand it more. Oh no, it doesn't help. <laughs> well then, let's decrease the amplitude. Mm hmm. Maybe m less. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Good, but uh, actually, 
we don't need such big particles. So it's 75. Oh, shit. Doesn't really work. 89. That's... Actually, it's okay. To do this, we... First, let's create an all here. And... Um, okay. Good. Um, let's see what we got here. RS light. Oh, this is something. Nice. Um, let's move it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, let's enable volumetric scattering. And. Uh, the color of the light should be different as well. It should be. It should look like this. Also, materials. We need materials. RS material builder. I'm gonna use just this node. Okay, we don't need uh, diffuse at all, since we're gonna work with uh, uh, subsurface scattering. We should add more roughness, obviously. Um, okay. Subsurface and wait. Hold on a sec. Oh, yeah, you see. Now it's starting to appear. Oh, also. <laughs> um, let's add it to our grid. Yeah. Well, it's mostly about just uh, adjusting the right uh, light's position and uh, Finding the right angle. Also, um, in my video, I put uh, texture on the grid. I uh, found it on uh, Bridge app. It was free. Uh, so yeah, here goes the boring part. <laughs> um, but if you play with phase, you'll see different look. And uh, oh, this is nice. <laughs> oh, also, don't forget to use depth of field uh, here in camera settings. No. Something like this. Let's add more light. One more. Rotate it 180 degrees. <laughs> okay, it just takes time to adjust it correctly. But um, I'll leave it up to you, guys. I showed you the main. Um, the main things that I use to to create this kind of effect, also you can 
Oh. <laughs> no, no, that's too much. You can play with this. And, uh, well, this is the main slider that uh, you're going to play with to create this this look. Okay, guys. Um, sorry for not giving you the exact same result that I got uh, when I first doing it, but I hope you will find this tutorial useful if you have uh, any other ideas on how to create it uh, easier. Maybe there is a more efficient way. Please share it with me. I'll be glad to know it. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching and goodbye.